Jai, Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Pari Brakach Chari Satsatsi Shri Madhis Divine Grace Asi Bhakti Vananta Swami Shil Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananda Kodi Vaishnava Vindhi Ki Jai Namachari Shila Hari Das Kothor Ki Jai Prema Goho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nisananda Shri Atwaita Gauradhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vindhi Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopa Nashama Kunda Radha Kunda Gidhi Govadana Ki Jai Vandava Dhamma Ki Jai Navadweet Dhamma Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Talalsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vindhi Ki Jai Gaur Prema Nandi all glory, Sima devotees. All glory, Sima devotees. All glory, Sima devotees. All glory to Shi Shi Guru and Goranga. So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. 10th Canto, 10th Chapter, Text Number 33. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tasmai Tubyam Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vedase Atma Dyota Gunais Channa Mahine Brahmane Namaha Someone could chant. Matajis.
word for word. Does my, because you are not to be understood from the material platform, we simply offer obeisances unto him. To Bhyam, unto you. Bhagavate, unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vasudevaya, unto Vasudeva. The origin of Sankarsana, Pardyumna, and Adiruda. Veda, Veda, Veda say, unto the origin of creation. Atma do, see, Atma dyota gunai chana mahine. Unto you, whose glories are covered by your personal energy. Brahmane, unto the Supreme Brahman. Namaha, a respectful obeisances. Translation, O Lord, whose glories are covered by your own energy. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are Sankarsana, the origin of creation. And you are Vasudeva, the origin of, ch of the Chaturvyudha. Because you are everything and are therefore the Supreme Brahman, we simply offer our respectful obeisances unto you. Purport. Instead of trying to understand Krishna in detail, it is better to offer our respectful obeisances unto him. For he is the origin of everything, and he is everything. Because we are covered by the material modes of nature, he is very difficult for us to understand unless he reveals himself to us. Therefore, it is better for us to acknowledge that he is everything and offer our respectful obeisances and offer obeisances unto his lotus feet. Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Bastaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vinanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Vaskachate Shatarane. So here it is mentioned uh, that because uh, we are covered by the modes of material nature, uh, we cannot understand the Supreme Lord. But if he reveals himself to us, uh, then it becomes possible. So this is our situation here in this material world. Uh, the spiritual world, uh, there is unadulterated goodness, uh, pure goodness. There is no passion or ignorance in, in the spiritual world. Uh, but in the material world, uh, the goodness is contaminated by the modes of passion and ignorance. Uh, in the spiritual world, uh, since there is no uh, passion, uh, everything is eternally existing. And because there is no ignorance, uh, that nothing is annihilated or destroyed. So these uh, the, the spiritual energy or the internal potency consists of three features eternity, knowledge, and bliss, or uh, sandini, ladini, and samvit. And so these three aspects of the internal energy uh, are manifested in the material world as the three modes of material nature, uh, wherein everybody is covered over by these three modes. Uh, beginning from Lord Brahma uh, down to the non-moving non living entities like the 
uh, plants and trees. They're all covered over uh, by different degrees of these modes of material nature. So uh, these different modes of material nature have been explained in different ways. Uh, it's explained that uh, yellow represents uh, the mode of goodness, uh, red the mode of passion, and uh, blue the mode of ignorance. And by uh, Matil nature mixing up these different uh, modes, uh, she's able to manifest so many different features, so many different products of this material world. Just like an artist, an artist just by taking these three primary colors, they can make so many different uh, pictures, uh, millions and millions of pictures, just by these three basic colors. So in this way, uh, material nature manifests the different species of life in this material world. So these different modes in this material world manifest, as I said, in different ways. Uh, where people live, uh, what people eat, uh, their happiness, their endeavor, their worship. This is all according to the three modes of material nature. Uh, just like it is stated in the Krishna book that those who live in the forest, uh, they're, that's, that's in the mode of goodness. And those who reside in cities, town, or villages, uh, they are in the modes of passion. And those who reside in places where uh, the four sinful activities, namely illicit sex, meat eating, gambling, intoxication, are prevalent, uh, they are in the modes of, of ignorance or the modes of darkness. So, uh, and, and those who live in the temple of Vishnu or Krishna, uh, they live in Vaikuntha, they're beyond the modes of material nature. So, uh, and, and no matter where the temple of Vishnu is, regardless of where it is, it could be in the forest or it could be in the middle of a big city, it doesn't matter, it's in Vaikuntha. Uh, it doesn't matter where it's situated. Uh, and also, uh, in, the, in the modes of material nature, uh, different people, uh, they, according to their, their modes, they worship different deities. Uh, those who are in the modes of goodness, um, uh, with some with some passion, uh, they worship the sun god. Uh, those who worship are those who are in the mode of goodness mixed with the mode of ignorance. They worship Ganesh, and those who uh, are in the mixed modes of passion ignorance, they worship uh, Durga or the external energy. And those who are in the mode of ignorance. Uh, they worship Lord Shiva, who is the predominating deity of the mode of ignorance. And those who are pure Vaishnavas, uh, they simply engage in, this, in worshiping Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, uh, by coming in contact with these different modes of material nature, uh, one becomes uh, contaminated by them, just like the example is given if one comes in contact with a certain disease, then one has to suffer from that disease. So when Srila Prabhupada was speaking about this, he was in Hawaii, and he was mentioning how this, the surfers on the beach, he said, I call them sufferers or sea sufferers. Uh, they like to dance in the ocean, so because they are contacting certain modes of material nature, then they'll have to take birth as fish in their next life. And in this way, uh, they'll have to uh, be in that fish uh, aquatic type forms for so many uh, different species. There's, I think there's something like 900,000 different species of fish and so many fishes, uh, so many species of plants and animals. In this way, uh, they remain in, these, in the lower forms of life for many, many millions of years. So this is the uh, dangerous situation of association with the three modes of material nature. They, they contaminated us with all these bad qualities. So uh, in this way, we suffer the threefold material miseries. Uh, 
one after another in this material world. Uh, in this material world, it is full of suffering. Uh, it's, it's the nature of the material world is, is that there's so many problems. So you solve one problem and then, then automatically another problem comes. And then you solve that one and another problem comes. So it's, it's a constant, it's constantly happening. There's, n there's never a relief from the suffering from the problems you get. And of course we know that the real problem is birth, death, disease, and old age. Uh, nobody wants these, but they're forced upon the living entity. Uh, nobody wants this. Just like, uh, like an old man, he may be suffering so much, he may be bedridden and he can't even get out of bed. But if his grandson says, my dear grandfather, you're suffering so much, let me shoot you. No, he say, no, 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 don't, no. He, he, want, he wants to continue, even though he's suffering so much. Uh, so in this way, there's so much suffering in the material world. Uh, even in time at the end of Lord Brahma's day, uh, Lord Brahma's day is 4,300,000,000 years. And so also is the duration of his night. So at the night of Lord Brahma, he goes to sleep. He goes in Yoga Nidra within the body of Garbhadakshai Vishnu. And all the... Uh, and the universe is inundated with water up to Maharloka. And this, in this way, the, so many bodies of the living entities are destroyed uh, and, and they suffer uh, greatly in this way. So uh, this is the situation, this material world. Uh, we have to get out. It's, uh, these things are always present. Uh, this is a real danger. Uh, and, and those who are actually in the human form of life, they understand this. They're, they're not satisfied. They're dissatisfied with the material world. They're not satisfied. Uh, the animals, uh, they're very happy. They're, they're satisfied. Uh, they're even, even if they're in a slaughterhouse, they're eating their grass uh, and, and they're satisfied. Even though so many animals around them are being slaughtered, they're simply happy eating their grass. Or Prabhupada, Prabhupada says sometimes they're engaging in sex life. So in this way, if the human beings are, are the same way, if they're simply engaging in eating, sleeping, main defending, and they're not distressed about, you know, what, what am I going to do about these problems, then they're no better than the animals. So the human life is meant for this, to get out of the lower modes of material nature, uh, to come to the mode of goodness, and then from there uh, get out of this material world. So, uh, from the lower modes of uh, material nature, goodness, um, from uh, passion and ignorance, come uh, these qualities of lust and greed. Uh, so we have to uh, get uh, rid of these qualities and come to the mode of goodness and become uh, satisfied with self-realization and progress in spiritual life. So this material world is it's been explained to be like a great river and the waves of this river are the three modes of material nature which produce various products namely this material body the senses thinking feeling and willing happiness and distress uh, lust and attachment so uh, one who uh, is absorbed in these things uh, uh, he cannot see uh, beyond these things. He cannot see above these things. He cannot see the identity of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this way, one's entangled uh, in the material world and fruitive activities and has to continue uh, in this process of birth and death uh, without being uh, relieved from this. So one has to go beyond these three uh, material, uh, these modes of material nature. As Krishna says, uh, one has to go beyond the three modes of material nature and thus come to the level of Brahman. So this is required in this human form of life. So uh, these modes are, we see this in, in modern society, how these modes are, are acting. 
Uh, they're in mostly in the in the modern age. They're simply uh, there's mostly people on the mode of ignorance with a little bit of passion, and there's no trace of any goodness. And so uh, we see that people engage in different uh, philosophies or uh, modes of life. Uh, the uh, problem mentioned how communism is the is uh, is the sutra class is, is is from the sutra class of society, and capitalism is from the uh, the Vaisha class of society. So uh, between these two fractions, uh, Prabhupada mentions how they'll be they're, they'll be fighting, and because of the abominable situation in society, uh, that the communists will win. And they they will they will they will become triumphant, and then what if what's what's ever left of human society will be ruined. Uh, but by and the only the only hope for them uh, is this Krishna consciousness movement. By accepting this Krishna conscious movement, by uh, offering everything to Krishna, whatever position you're in, if you offer that to Krishna then everybody will be satisfied. Otherwise, there will be constant struggle for existence. So, uh, so the devotees of the Lord, they're, they're satisfied with serving Krishna. Krishna's, Krishna's so nice. He's so attractive. And no matter what happens to the devotee, he will not give Krishna up. Uh, Narada Muni uh, he mentioned this to Krishna. Uh, he, uh, uh, Narada Muni probably mentions that he's, since he's a devotee, he could offer some criticism to Krishna. He said, Krishna, uh, the Pandavas, uh, they're your devotees, but they're unhappy. Uh, their, their kingdom was taken away from them. Uh, their wife was insulted. Uh, they have been banished. So do you think this is, this is a very nice thing? He said, but still the wonderful thing is that uh, their love for you is simply increased. So this is a position of devotee that no matter what happens, his love for Krishna will, will increase. Something bad happens to him, he thinks that this is Krishna's grace. Actually, because of my pad, bas uh, bad past activities, I should have suffered a hundred times greater. But it's simply Krishna's grace that I am suffering only a little bit. So in this way, the devotee thinks like that. Uh, he engages in devotional service. He hears Srimad Bhagavatam. As is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, simply by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, that one could capture Krishna. Uh, one could capture Krishna if one's simply a little willing. Uh, it's just a matter of our willing to do so. Just like if one is, uh, she'll probably mention how his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Sananta, gave the example if one's fallen to a well and one's screaming out, uh, get, please get me out, get me out, get me out. And so, the person throws down a rope, a nice, strong, tight rope, and says, okay, just take the rope, hold on to it, and I'll pull you out. And the person says, uh, that I cannot do. So what's that position of that person? He, at least we have to be willing to hold on to the rope. Uh, Krishna says, uh, abandon all varieties of religions and surrender to me. I shall deliver you from all sin for reaction. Do not fear. So we have to at least be willing. We have to be willing. We have free will. We're not, our, we're not, we're not a dead stone. Uh, so we have to hold on to the rope, and then Krishna will do everything. Uh, so in this material world, uh, we have to offer everything to Krishna. We have to offer everything that we have, all our possessions, to Krishna. In this way, we'll be happy uh, both in this life and in the next. Uh, but if we use what we have for sense gratification, 
then that's been explained to be like the fruits of a poisonous tree. Uh, we will simply suffer by eating such fruits. Uh, this is mentioned in the fifth canto of Shema Bhagavatam, the poisonous tree. Simply eating this, uh, the fruits of this poisonous tree will cause suffering. Or Srila Prabhupada also explains that uh, we are eating the forbidden apple and thus we fall from paradise. So Krishna says, uh, Krishna tells us, uh, we're, in, we're in this tree of this body, uh, where uh, the two birds are in the tree of this body, and one bird is eating the fruits of the tree of happiness and distress, and the other bird is simply witnessing the other bird because he's self-satisfied. So the self-satisfied bird is, is the super soul, and the eating bird is the living entity. Uh, but Krishna tells the, the eating bird, he says, uh, give up this eating this forbidden apple. Just surrender unto me. But unfortunately, uh, we want to eat the forbidden apple and uh, to enjoy the, this material world. Uh, he, Krishna allows us. He'll allow us to do that. Just like a man, he loves his dog. He'll let the dog go wherever he wants, here, there, everywhere. So in this way, Krishna allows us to go wherever we want. Okay, you, you, don't, you, you don't want to surrender unto me, uh, so you do whatever you want, but you reap the result yourself. So this is our situation. Krishna will give us free will, uh, but if we're intelligent, we'll use it wisely and surrender unto him. So on this tree of the material body, uh, there's these uh, different roots, three different roots in the tree of the material body. And these are known as the three modes of material nature. And as the roots of a tree expand in different directions, uh, by, our asso uh, by associating with the, the, the modes of material nature, we expand our duration of existence within this material world. So in this way, uh, there are different types of activities, a karma, v karma, and karma. Karma is fruit of activities which give a good result. Uh, v karma is activities which give a bad result. And a karma are activities which give no good or bad result. That's devotional service. So by uh, engaging in activities in the modes of material nature, whatever those modes are, that was simply... Uh, increase our existence within this material world. So we have to uh, take up devotional service and as mentioned, as, as this whole chapter has explained how Krishna delivers the sons of Kuvera, uh, Nalu Kuvara and Mani Griva, uh, simply by their seeing, uh, they got the blessings of Narada Muni. Uh, that's what uh, that, that's how they actually became liberated. They got the blessings and they got the darshan of Narada Muni. So this is explained there that simply uh, by seeing, coming face to face with a, a, a great lib liberated soul, a great soul like Narada Muni, uh, one becomes liberated. So this is the advantage of coming in contact with the pure soul. Simply by his association, by his presence, uh, one becomes liberated. Of course, one also has to be careful uh, not to commit offenses, not to commit Vaishnava Aparat, because even though one gets liberated by seeing a great soul, uh, if one commits Vaishnava Aparat, then uh, his liberation may take a while before it becomes manifest. So in this way, one has to... Uh, be very careful. So this is the blessing of a great soul. So we also take that to mean uh, Srila Prabhupada. He was a great soul like Narada Muni. And simply by seeing him, uh, one becomes liberated. But as I said before, one has to also be careful to not to commit Vaishnava Aparat also. So uh, in this way, Prabhupada would travel all around the world and he would bless people with just by uh, making himself visible to the people of the world. 
like here in Los Angeles, he would come to Los Angeles uh, every year. I first saw him myself in when it was like 1971 or 72 and uh, giving classes and and then I joined when I joined in 72 and then he later came into 73 and this we would call, he would stay here in Los Angeles for about about a month or so you know especially in 73 74 and I think 75 too anyway a lot, a lot of time she will probably spend here in Los Angeles in this way, I was able to uh, see him face to face, uh, giving lectures, or uh, we were so anxious to see Shil Prabhupada. Uh, even in his uh, most most of the devotees in the ashram, we didn't get we, we see him during class, but usually we weren't we didn't we weren't able to see him at other times because so many devotees wanted to see him, and unless you were like. Uh, like a VIP, you weren't, you know, Temple Prezus and Yasi it was very difficult to see him. So we would, you know, whatever way we could find, we would try to see Prabhupada. Like sometimes he would, like he would go to his garden a lot in the same place it is right now. Uh, basically, it's, it's the same way it is right now, except there used to be a, a fountain there, but now the fountain's not there anymore. But uh, we used to uh, go up in uh, what's now is the gift shop. And uh, where they keep the storage, and we used to that used to be the Bashada room, and we used to uh, just you know watch Prabhupada from the windows up there, just you know like stare at Prabhupada. You know, uh, some people thought, oh, this is not, you shouldn't stare at Prabhupada. You know, that's not polite. You know, they would say, but we didn't care. You know, we just would try to see Prabhupada, and uh, and sometimes and and Prabhupada, you know, he would. Uh, of course, he would take his meals here. His cooks would, uh, you know, cook for him, and and then they would bring his. I used to work in the kitchen during that time, and they would bring his remnants of his breakfast into the kitchen and put it on the shelf. There was a shelf, that they, and they would put on the, and I would take his remnants all the time. So uh, this this is a great opportunity. It's part of the uh, getting the mercy, just like uh, Narada Muni. He got the he gave the mercy to the. Uh, Madi uh, Madi Griva and Nalu Kavara, and he got the mercy from the Bhakti Vedantas in his past life by eating their remnants and, and hearing from them, seeing them face to face. So this is, but he also took up the instructions. Narada Muni took up the instructions after the Bhakti Vedantas left. He get, he followed their instructions and he meditated on Vishnu. In this way, he achieved perfection. So this is very important uh, to see the spiritual master, but also more importantly is to follow his instructions. This is the most important thing. But simply by seeing this helps very much in advancement in spiritual life. So uh, we have to engage in Krishna consciousness uh, e uh, even if by force. Uh, Srila Prabhupada wrote one letter to Upendra in 1968. He said, you could pray to Krishna. Uh, Dear Krishna, uh, uh, I am unwilling to become Krishna conscious. Force me to become Krishna conscious. Put me in such a, a circumstances that it will force me to become Krishna conscious. So a uh, devotee prays like this, that uh, Krishna, help me become Krishna conscious and uh, help me advance in spiritual life. So if we sincerely take to Krishna consciousness, if we say that Krishna, uh, from this day I'm yours, if we sincerely chant Hare Krishna, uh, then Krishna will never leave us. Uh, he will always, weep, will always be with us. Uh, whether it's in uh, this life or the next, he will never leave our, our association. We will come back to him. Uh, Prabhupada uh, g gave the example of Bilva Mangal Thakur. He was the uh, he he was a, he was he appeared in a Brahmana family, uh, but he was attached to a prostitute Chintamani. And and w one one day he was uh, he was at the Shraddha ceremony, his father, the funeral ceremony, his father, and he was so anxious to see Chintamani that he just wanted to get this thing over with. 
Uh, so in this way, uh, he, he left and he, uh, he tried to cross the river and there, and there was a dead body uh, and he grabbed it. I think he thought it was a log. Anyway, he, 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 then he understood it was a dead body and there was torrents of rain and he, he, he somehow or another, he got over the wall of Chitamani's house and, uh, and then when he arrived, she was astonished. And she told him that uh, if you if you had that such so, if you had such a, uh, that much attraction for Krishna, surely this would have been very nice. And so this way, it just he just got it and he just gave up everything and went to Vrindavan. And so uh, Krishna is like that. Uh, he, uh, Krishna is nice like that. At a certain point, uh, he will he will remind us again if you sincerely uh, take up Krishna consciousness. So we have to understand Krishna with these purified senses, uh, with, with our, with, with, when, when our senses are purified. In the material, in the, in material uh, state, our senses are contaminated by the lower modes of material nature. Uh, just like it's mentioned that in barbarian stage of life, uh, the senses are, are satisfied in a very crude way. Whereas in civilized uh, civilization, the senses are, are gratified in a polished way. But if when one's in the mode of goodness, uh, one can understand that the scent uh, the senses are being covered over with perverted consciousness. And with that understanding, uh, one can uh, engage the senses in the service of the Lord. When, 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 in this way, one becomes purified. So it's not that one can't understand Krishna through the mind, intelligence, and senses, but one has to purify them. In this way, it's possible to understand Krishna through these senses. So uh, in, this, in this verse, it talked about, in this purport, it talked about revelation. When Krishna has to reveal himself to the devotee, one can't understand him because uh, one's uh, under the modes of material nature. He, Krishna has to reveal this, uh, reveal himself to the devotee. So this is explained in the uh, nectar of instruction in the preface, Srila Prabhupada mentions that one has to situate oneself on the platform of goodness uh, by following the instructions of Srila Rupa Goswami and then uh, further, uh, how to advance further uh, will be revealed. So this is a way of revelation. The revelation is not a, it's not a compli in a way it's not a complicated thing one simply has to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. And this way, one elevates oneself more and more. And then uh, things will be revealed to him how to progress more in Krishna consciousness. So simply by uh, giving everything to Krishna, uh, we become purified. We offer Krishna nice food. We offer him service. Uh, but it's not that he simply takes it away. We offer Krishna nice food, but he leaves everything. Uh, we ought, whatever we offer to him, he leaves it for us. So in this way, there is no loss, but simply uh, the gain is there. So in this way, we should engage, engage in this, the process of devotional service. We should follow all the instructions given by the spiritual master. Uh, there, all, these, all the instructions of the spiritual master are important. Uh, not that we uh, ex uh, accept something at the, at the expense of something else. No, but everything in, in devotional service uh, sh should be taken up. And this way, by doing that, uh, we will become successful. So I'll stop there. Are there any questions on these points? Yes, Neelam
just reflecting on how I'm surrendering all the time. Yeah. But I won't surrender to the 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 right things, you know. So I was just reflecting, you know, something to improve. And <laughs> yeah. So it's it's you can't you can't give anything it up. You mean if if you don't surrender to Krishna, you have to surrender to Maya. But we have to understand what's our position. What's the result of surrendering to Maya? And then if we ponder that and and un try to understand that. And pray to Krishna to please give me intelligence. Please force me to surrender unto you. Then uh, we'll we'll understand more and more. In this way, eventually we'll surrender unto Krishna. It all depends on your desire. It's it's you know you has to be heartfelt. You know you can't. It's not simply. It's I mean words are there, but. It also has to have your intention, your desire has to be pure. And if you really want it, because Krishna's filling every, everybody's desires. Whatever we desire, if we desire a certain sense gratification, a certain body, if we want, Krishna will, okay, you want that, you get it. If you want, a, if you want a, a, a spiritual form to serve Krishna, I want to become a servant, a cowherd boy, a blade of grass, whatever you want, if you really want that, the Krishna say, here, take it. You know, so it's ultimately up our, to our, our, our desire. And by engaging the process of, of devotional service, uh, then we purify our senses and then we can understand what's the right thing to do like that. Okay. So, uh, yes. Uh, wonderful lecture, Prabhu. A uh, lot of knowledge to take in. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have uh, since today's Shivratri. Uh, I would like to know why Shiva is uh, considered as the greatest uh, Vaishnav. He's uh, is he, he's, he's uh, the what the, the Vaishnava what? Uh, greatest Vaishnav. He, he he's the greatest why? Vaishnava because why? he's always thinking of Krishna. That's his position. So anyway, he was one of the topmost devotees of the Lord. And uh, one of the twelve Mahajans, he's one of the uh, uh, one of the three Guna avatars, and he's always engaging in meditating on the supreme personality of Godhead. So in this way, he's the greatest devotee. So it's getting kind of late now, so we can stop there. All glories to Shishi, Guru, and Goranga. Good question. Thank you.